Recording is on. Hello. Well, yeah, hello everybody. Um, so, yeah, this is um, a conversation between um, Sophie and Hugh. Um, and so, yeah, we're going to pick up, I think, about um, what what's the, the topic? Feminism and Carly? No, how, what do you want to I didn't want to talk. Is, is my microphone on yet? No, no, no. Well, feminism, yes. no, really, I don't like that. Makes me a bit sick to think that that word. I never liked it. I uh, know my questions were more following the meeting uh, we had last Sunday um, where I was asking you questions about the obstacles for a woman on the path of uh, maybe seeing the bull. And uh, I was wondering also if the meditations, the meditations that you describe with the phosphines um, and, and the female um, dominance with the mammalian brain. I don't know. I feel there's something there that I'd like to explore. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in the obstacles on the mammalian brain. And also I was very interested in listening again to your conversation with Hank about uh, Kali and uh, the feminine principle and the rage and all that. And uh, I would love you to hear what you have to say about this again um, in the light of my questions. Thank you. Oh, damn it, this. <laughs> I'm having a few technical difficulties. The, the mute button uh, has disappeared. So the only way I can unmute is by pressing the space bar. <laughs> so, uh, I'm having to hold the space bar down to talk. Can you hear me? Oh, okay, so, yeah, so, yeah, okay, so, damn, I'm, I'm just going to have to uh, power through it. Digital stuff, man, it's, it's oh, by the way, yeah, um, this, I used to talk to Hank quite a lot about this, this kind of subject, and we'd always get uh, technical difficulties, which we <laughs> assumed was not, not coincidence. If you if you broach the subject, you'll find that you'll get technical difficulties. It's it's difficult. It's kind of like censorship. It's not censorship by like Google and stuff. It's it's some principle of the universe. It's but it's it's the yeah. You put out. Uh, it's you can only get woo woo about it. You put out some vibe that <clears throat> goes against the digital and the digital fights back it'll it'll do weird stuff it's not humans it's this digital principle in the universe and so yeah so that uh so i never i used to debate with uh we used to have very interesting conversations uh hank and i but we we didn't um we didn't ever record them or put them out because it just but it's it's just too inflammatory the the whole subject of uh, you know feminine well really the gender war so if you start talking about gender it goes south very very quickly because people get very very animated so it's kind of like in the middle of a barroom fight trying to you know analyze a barroom fight <laughs> and every everybody's thinking you know who caused the fight who's you know uh you're you're you know they cannot believe that you aloof from the, the fight they think that you have a vested interest and you're fighting on one side or the other. As soon as they figure out which side you're on, you go into the attack mode. And so it's 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 going to kill us. It's going to kill us. It's because we haven't got this awareness, right? We haven't got this um, kind of super awareness, this elevated objectivism. Uh, so we can't, you know, transcend ourselves. So the... Uh, now, even if you say that there is a difference between female and male enlightenment, you've already got to fight it. <laughs> a lot of people. Uh, but this is the truth as, as I know it. And of course, you you kind of stuck because I mean, I'm male and you can't escape that. 
even if you say you're male and you cannot escape that, and you people will fight. <laughs> and say, what about trans people? And so you're like, oh God, you you can't make progress in this to, towards enlightenment in this. So generally, I just avoid it and just say, you know, refer to the mammalian brain instead of saying women do this or something. And then it neutralizes it. It makes sure that you're talking to the, the left brain. So, so if you keep it, one of the advantages of having this pop psych kind of idea of five brain layers, it allows you to stop this crosstalk that I mentioned in one of my videos where I put in Kathy. Kathy Graham or whatever her name is, and Jordan Peterson. What I was trying to show, show people is that uh, if you, you, you can get to a thing where you can objectify which part of the brain you're triggering, because what men and women are normally doing is they having this crosstalk between the layers. And, and so, so, for example, women start off with a mammalian brain, and the mammalian brain is motherhood and apple pie and looking after the kids, and it's all oxytocin. But it, and it's mostly agreeable, but oxytocin is a Janus headed you know, hormone, and it also has the rage of the mama bear. So there's there's no rage worse than the rage of the mama bear when you get between her and her cubs. So you, you have this kind of you know um, maternal rage, uh, and so it needs to be very powerful because of obvious kind of evolutionary reasons. Uh, so you. Nature has made us evolve to a point where you you cannot dismiss the mama bear or or attack it or you know like motherhood and apple pie is sacred, and that's why we have the sacred feminine because you know if you think of our whole point according to Darwinism is to propagate our genes that you know motherhood is absolutely essential for a mammal to propagate their genes so it's it becomes sacred. And so then when you get to a point like now, when we're in trouble as a species and may go extinct because of the world we've created, uh, you have to say some things like, you know, it's domestication that's killing us. Uh, it's domestication means we can't resist. And, it's, uh, and you know, it's you have to go into this gender territory. As soon as you do that, um, you step on people, well, you activate uh, people's mammalian brain uh, because it's uh, nature made us very trigger happy in that area because that area you don't want to mess with in normal circumstance but it's kind of like the mammalian brain has done too much of a good thing and that's what Carly's rampage is about you know so in in one sense so Carly's rampage yeah is um and how she gets calmed is so Carly's on a rampage against the demon so it's it's two ways to look at it. It's uh, really, I think, in the day, back in the day when the Aryans were actually creating the Bhagavad Gita and teaching people how to do transcendence, um, they, the Kali's Rampage, I think, then is uh, you must see as personal psychological development. And so the demons that Kali's going after are, you know, bits of your own psychology. So it's the demons inside your head, particularly the prime demon, which is the alien cortex. And so that's the bull. So the first thing to do is perceive that alien cortex. Um, almost as soon as you perceive it, it means that you've stepped out of it. So the eye can't see itself, and it's really that cortex looking for the alien cortex. So seeing it is kind of very involuted and uh, kind of contradictory. But you can see how uh, males and females have to have a different approach to see their own alien cortex. You see, because the mammalian brain is so primed and so highly energized in in areas of with the stem gen, you know, like the stem gen is like generous, generate, genus, genocide, gestate. All all these things are from the the Sanskrit root um, for that's the same as generate and gender and all the stuff is uh, is to essentially propagate to be to give birth is the root I think for the, the so anything with the word gen is the is the mammalian brain department and you know that it's a powder cake <laughs> so, so uh, now when you're talking about Kali and you know seeing the seeing the alien cortex um, the 
the mammalian, so, so the female in general uh, is working differently to males, is that really the mammalian brain uh, is the powerhouse and the alien cortex is serving. It's, it's like in McGillcrest's thing where the master and his emissary and McGillcrest says, you know, the alien cortex should be serving, or he says left brain should be serving the right brain. But, you know, in my terminology, that would be the alien cortex, which is mainly on the left, left hemisphere, uh, should be serving other four layers, which are exposed on the right hemisphere because it's there's no strong alien cortex on the right hemisphere. But anyway, I prefer to see it as vertical layers rather than and with the alien cortex being the fifth layer mainly on the left side than see it as two different hemispheres like the real crest. But so anyway, um, in terms of uh, the, the way females operate, then it's not like McGill Christ says. It's a McGill Christ thing is really a male thing where he says that the master, uh, you know, the alien cortex has usurped the right hemisphere and the right hemisphere should be restored as the primary um, part of our brain and then the left hemisphere should become the servant and so now that's a pretty male thing he doesn't seem to realize that in females it already is that way for most females the, the mammalian brain is supreme and they use the alien cortex to serve it so it really is in that relationship. So again, the right hemisphere is you know, more exposed as as the mammalian brain, not not because that's where it's housed, but it's where if you you know each layer suppresses the main job is to suppress the other layer. So it looks like the light, the mammalian brain is more active in the right hemisphere because there's uh, less fifth layer of alien cortex to suppress the other layers. So, so you can see it quite clearly that suppression because you know the uh, on the right hand side there's less less primate brain as well. So if there's something to do with motherhood, it's supreme. If uh, if the primate brain has some social convention or anything, the motherhood and apple pie will overrule the social convention. And if there's some intellectual arguments or something that's coming from the alien cortex that's present. Mama will tell you, shut the fuck up. The children are at stake. Get that, <laughs> get that lizard brain out of here. And then she'll sort it out quickly, you know, and we need that for, for our survival. So in a lot of ways, you know, yes, is, is wrong. The, in woman, there is the right relationship between the master and his emissary. Um, and you can see women doing this. So this is one of the reasons why it's uh, such a gender divide and why there's such bad communication between the sexes is because the uh, men, and you can clearly see this with Jordan Peterson, he's, he's in the alien cortex. He is a walking alien cortex. I think the rest of his brain barely functions. I think it's probably, he's probably got a deficit. <laughs> it's almost like McGillcry says, it's like right hemisphere damage. You know? it's like, uh, and you can see him like that. So he's talking to I think it's Kathy Graham. I, I, I hope I haven't got that name wrong. But anyway, in the famous interview, and he's um, he's talking out of his alien cortex, and he's expecting a response from her alien cortex. But her alien cortex is depowered, as in most in most women, and she's all in her mammalian brain. You can absolutely see it because she's talking about feelings and sympathy and caring for you know your right to you know. Um, to hurt the feelings of trans people, in other words, protect the babies, you know, kind of thing. She's completely coming from a mammalian brain, and neither of them get it that they're talking to different parts of the brain. So it's it's like talking different languages. So you get this left brain approach from Jordan Peterson, and it gets this violent emotional response from the mammalian brain. And then you can see them doing this little dance and just very confused because they don't understand the, the layered brain. So having sketched this out, then let's talk about metamorphosis and transformation. So the first thing is to see the bull. Well, it's different for a woman because already it's like, you know, they don't have to see the emissary 
and and go, whoa, the emissary has you totally usurped the kingdom like McGill Christ style. Because in women it generally hasn't. <laughs> they don't have the testosterone and things that's activated the alien cortex. So, you know, it'd be like for women, if you say, you know, well, seeing the bull is like, yeah, I see the bull. It's the servant. So I use that servant to do lame arguments for feminism and <laughs> you know, that, that kind of thing. And so it doesn't really work. Uh, so, but I think in terms of self-observation, you still need that self-observation. So in some ways, it's almost a reverse. The woman needs to elevate the alien cortex um, and and get it to and get it to be master. So the inverse, in in some respects. Right? So it's. Uh, you see, and because the and the reason is because the mammalian brain is so powerful. Now, you wouldn't normally want to do this. If we lived in a village and we were happily piraha and stuff like that, you don't you don't want to be doing this transformation. And so it's it's become necessary because of the politics of the layered brain and the fact that the you know Ian McGillcrest's left hemisphere, the alien cortex, has become transformed the whole world. It's taken over the whole world. It's made it geometric. It's made it digital. It's made it, made it reductionist. It's all these things that are destroying the world. Um, you know, this particular way of looking at metrics, of seeing truth as black and white, and all of this, it's, it has created the Industrial Revolution. It's and the way we are dealing with the alien cortex is still from the alien cortex. It's like, we, you know, like we're doing more engineering to solve all the engineering that the alien cortex did in the first place. A mammalian brain can see straight away, this alien cortex is dangerous and needs to be stopped. See, so, so then in terms of Carly's rampage, she's rampaging around, putting, you know, this demon, this demon in our culture, the, you know, the brainchild of, of the alien cortex is AI and all these computers and digital world. She's fighting against you know, all of that in terms of psychology, not really in terms of politics, right? But you can see the problem there is she doesn't know how to deal with the alien cortex, just like Kathy Graham doesn't know how to deal with Jordan Peterson. So you, you can see it with XR. It's primarily a feminist organization. It's women. And they kind of, in this kind of, you know, village, tribal, mode where they're trying to nag the government to death you know oh the babies are at risk we're doing this for the children um the government must do something like what <laughs> and they must do it really quickly and they're kind of nagging them to death so it's all this mammalian brain concerned with no thought no no thought about what's going to happen and yeah it's obvious what's going to happen things like geoengineering things like nuclear you know Britain's about it, and COP26 is about to announce they're going to go nuclear to handle climate change. Well, you got your action, mammalian brain, and it's much, much worse than the original problem. So, so women have to, you know, quieten down the mammalian brain and say, you know, we've got to start calculating. We have to be more, uh, you know, kind of reptilian brains and more alien cortex. We have to be more male in our approach. Um, and so it's, in some senses, you have to see the damage that the mammalian brain is doing. The damage is things like, well, we can't be violent. It's like, no, you can be violent. In fact, it's required at this stage. Extreme violence is required. But, you know, it's not the time to be agreeable and carry sherry and, you know, sing kumbaya and stuff. It's, it's the time for, you know, mama bear rage. Now, mama bear rage is useless against the alien cortex. The alien cortex will carve you up. So, so it's time to get calculating, to get a little bit psychopathic. And so, so women need to perceive, the, the mammalian brain perceives the damage that over-domestication is causing us and to allow the reptilian brain and the, and the, um, the alien cortex uh, to live a little, you know, let it, let it to allow it to have take some power. So um, just temporarily to sort sort out the problem, otherwise we're in deep trouble. 
Um, but for the males, to they need to overcome their ego. And that's what Kali and the story about Kali's rampage is about, is Shiva is really the alien cortex, right? In, in terms of Kali and the, the symbology of the Kali tantra, tantric religion, and is Kali's really our unconscious. So in other words, the four layers. And so, uh, and, you know, and the material universe. She represents, so, you know, Marta, the word Marta, materialism, prima Marta, you know, mother. It's, it's, that's, that's what she is. So, so, um, she, uh, yeah, so in terms of, of that, that rampage that, that she's on, um, then Shiva is the alien cortex and, uh, he calms her down and he calms her down by laying you know prostate at her feet so that in her rampage he she puts on his chest now that that that's called the touch of kali and the touch of kali means death so in other words it's not spelled out very well in the myths but shiva is killing himself for kali to calm her down and so shiva is generally they will tell you is the ego and, and particularly you know the alien in our terminology the alien cortex full of testosterone um, kind of riding the lizard brain the reptilian brain and so you so the male needs to sacrifice his ego um, to calm Kali down but Kali needs to calm down and engage her left hemisphere which is incredibly difficult to do because the mammalian banks are powerful. So, is is that help at all? <laughs> yes, very clear. It's clarified things a little, kind of. Sh yes, I had little obscure places that I needed you to shine a light on in your in your description of of the five layers and and uh, and that. Uh, yeah, I'm, it's going to help me to understand more things, uh, even personally, uh, even though. Uh, at my age, it's a bit different. I think the, there's something that happens with the mammalian brain. I think when you age, that is, that is uh, interesting. But we can explore that another time. You posted a very interesting um, thing on Reddit about uh, with uh, Sapolsky, uh, the the anthropologist on testosterone and uh, and the brain, and it was another um, another uh, video that. Uh, demystified uh, ideas about the link between testosterone and aggressivity and and a lot of things about the effect of the hormones um uh, on the brain and uh, and thank you for that uh, also because i i'm very interested in in this uh, not gender it's more it's more this uh, interesting tension existing between between the two genders but how it can converge to to get where we want to get because we don't want to waste time as you said very rightly last week on on uh, on differences what we have to do is 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 uh, prepare psychologically and work towards um, action and um, yeah that's why i think that it's very important that women understand more things about what we're talking about and that it hadn't been talked about much before and i thank you for that um but would you like to say something more about the testosterone video that you posted because i thought it was very yeah. very interesting uh, yeah. yeah i would actually so that it's a little creepy how that video how i came across that video and it shows you you know what's going on in terms of surveillance but the the I think the reason that video was recommended to me was my top recommendation on YouTube. And here's the reason why. Because they mentioned the long ring finger, right, with testosterone. With, so one of the keys to, you know, um, exposure of testosterone in the womb is that your ring finger is longer in males. So it's a key that you've been exposed. So it means... If you look at somebody's hands and you can you can see it they say in the video oh don't don't assume you can see it it's more complicated than that horse shit. you can see it normally on somebody's hands so the so what i did was i i was thinking about this topic about um women that are kind of really masculinized and so 
in terms of explaining, you know, what the uh, the alien cortex is like, and for a woman that has a, a kind of a, a strong alien cortex, you know, I was I was thinking of in terms of Ayn Rand, right? So Ayn, Ayn Rand typifies the alien cortex, her objectivism and and just that ego and this isolation and it's it's pure alien cortex and so it's it's rarer in a woman um, and so I th I was thinking oh I just go and do an image lookup and so to see her hands and sure enough her her ring finger I just I did a little search to see well, you know which was it again I couldn't remember the ring finger the index finger was longer. So I went and did the search on the ring finger, then did an, a search on images of her, and I found ones that definitely her ring finger is longer, which supports the idea that testosterone boosts the alien cortex or the development, early development of the alien cortex in the womb. So, so it, I just wanted to add that, just how damn creepy all this surveillance is, but you know, it, it, it did lead to that, that video. Yeah, so, um, there, there's so much pop psychology around these these hormones, you know, like testosterone and uh, oxytocin, and they're kind of an example of how you can't talk about these subjects without people's heads spinning off. Their heads explode because, you know, if you start talking about oxytocin, everybody knows you're talking about women, and you say one thing about it, and so it becomes highly politicized. And here's this guy who's a, like, so-called expert, and he's also doing it. You can see that he's left wing and he's also spreading misinformation as fact checking and correcting the record. He's spreading misinformation. For example, he's saying, oh, you know, uh, the truth, which is testosterone doesn't actually make you more you know, uh, aggressive or have these male characteristics. He doesn't quite say that, but that's what he implies. He's saying it just amplifies what you already have. Say, well, that's the truth, but that's also a fucking huge fucking lie. <laughs> it's that's a perfect example of how to lie by telling the truth. Because what he's trying to say is that it's you know it's it's political and it's gender based. What he's saying underneath it all, and so all these academics are trying to push this feminine line and reduce masculinity and so on, and and trying to say oh gender is not important. It's a social construct. All of this horseshit. And what he's covered up is the fact that yes. What he's saying is technically correct. But inside the womb, then you're exposed to testosterone. If you're exposed to testosterone in the womb, then that's the bigger male aggressive alien cortex part that gets dialed up later with testosterone. So it's 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 misleading to say, you know, testosterone doesn't dial you up and make you male unless you are, you know, it just amplifies the parts. And then you've got to say the parts that are already male because of the testosterone you got in the womb. So it it's nullifies the whole freaking argument that testosterone's not doing it. So, and the other thing is it's not strictly speaking correct. If you have asked people that have, say, hormone uh, replacement therapy or people, the trans people that are on a lot of uh, male hormones, is they think about sex all the time and they <laughs> they get, you know, uh, really, the stereotype of a chauvinistic male. <laughs> so it's uh, it's not quite right. They're pushing a political agenda uh, up this hill. And the same with oxytocin, as they try and say it's not all about being agreeable and stuff, but it's all gender politics hidden as good science, which is which is not very cool. Well, oxytocin is also the topic. Actually. Oxytocin is also the hormone that is made in the body to increase the labor. Uh, to contract the womb and to to, to give life, uh, and it's uh, all this all this conversation on hormones, as you say, that you see at the moment, is driven by this crazy situation where we've got where we've got now with the gender um, wars, or you call them, or whatever they are. And I um, I'm I'm very uh, pessimistic about this. Um, I've noticed. Um, among the patients I used to have a big behavior change um, with uh, young women uh, towards their partners, towards their sexual partners, towards sex in itself. Um, I've noticed um, 
uh, slutization of women. <laughs> Do you know that they start to respond to some kind of psychopathic uh, desire of certain bizarre men too, I suppose, who have also turned that way and completely uh, deny their femininity and turn it into a sort of I'm a slut kind of thing. Like I was working in a family planning clinic for a long time and I had stories that I would not share online, but I was, okay, I'm older and I'm from another generation, but I I could see that there was a destruction of the self-esteem uh, of these women and and of the the sex had become very sad and technical and everything. And so I can see where we're going and it's not a nice place. Um, it's it's really not a nice place in terms of gender. So uh, what do you have to say about that, about this, uh, Hugh? Well, it's becoming uh, engineered. So this is, you know, it's it's artificial. It's getting into one of our deepest and evolutionary wise, one of our most cherished and, you know, kind of sacred places. And that's, you know, sex and gender and reproduction. But it's, it's the alien cortex is getting involved. Alien cortex is, is always an intermediary in something. It always wants to interfere. So we, we, on the basis of helping people and being kind and also coming from the mammalian brain. See, a lot of the people with trans, you know, pushing a trans agenda and that is they, they're saying it's all about caring and it's the feelings of the person. And, you know, it's, it's uh, you don't often hear men talking in that way. It's a very feminized way of saying it's okay that, you know, you know, people uh, transition from male to female because there's kind of this exaltation of the female. It's Carly's rampage. It's too much feminine, too, you know. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a demonic kind of thing, but it's it's that's a misuse of the of the alien cortex in the female context, is they're using engineering to engineer a feminine outcome. And so it's it's um, it's a kind of dysphoric. Um, I want to go back to what you passed over and said we, we should do talk about later, and that's how the transition as you get older, especially as a woman. And I think we should talk about that now because that is very important in terms of metamorphosis and personal development. So I think where you hedging is that uh, it's well known, say in India and in some of these traditions of you know self development um, and transformation and liberation uh, is is that as they get older men uh, become women and women become men so uh, the particular example is Sri Ramakrishna and uh, Sri Saradevi his consort or wife and so he he's now considered in Bengal is considered God he, he he made a transition in a hundred years. He made a transition after his death. He made a transition to being a saint, to being Messiah, Jesus, God on <laughs> Anyway, so he had a, a wife. He had an arranged marriage and a wife, and so kind of platonic relationship by all, by most accounts. But he, I think, um, but then um, you see, so Sri Saradevi outlived him by quite a long margin, and she became a kind of a, not quite a goddess, but a kind of a Mother Teresa figure. And you can see in her, she she does a transition to being much more masculine. She's not, you know, she's not so feeling. So it's it's like Mother Teresa. She's, she's a maternal figure, but a matriarch, and but not, you know, sloppy, sentimental um, kind of... Uh, that kind of soft feminism. She's kind of hard-edged, practical, uh, look after the babies, but no nonsense and no goo goo, you know, it's kind of, and um, so as you can see, she's kind of become how men are more when they're younger, you know, perfunctory to most of the mammalian brain. But Sri Ramakrishna becomes the opposite. He, he puts on adipose fat and gets starts to grow breasts and he becomes more and more feminine and even starts wearing dresses <laughs> so 
he goes in the opposite direction. Now that was accepted in, in the time. That is how it was culturally is supposed to be, that a, a man is supposed to be virile and masculine as according to the stereotype when they're younger. But when they get older, they're supposed to become women and vice versa. A woman in, you know, a young girl in Bengal is a very second class citizen. But by the time she gets older and, you know, she's been through menopause and uh, then, then she's quite permitted to be a man. So, you know, we, we have all these gender, you know, we transfer all our gender politics on to them and it's not appropriate because the Sri Ramakrishna was kept by this this woman who was a very successful businesswoman. She was called Rani Rani Rajmani. And she owned the temple and supported him. And the reason we know about Sri Ramakrishna is mainly because Rani Rajmani, like I think she owned a newspaper and she published things and uh, she kept him in the temple. I think, you know, she built the temple and he was the temple priest. So it's, she made uh, Sri Maman Krishna into God <laughs> and made him famous. And so here's this woman power figure and we're supposed to believe, oh no, you know, in, uh, in those societies, there's not, you know, women are second class citizens and there are no, you know, gender rights for, you know, women's rights are an issue. and Continually, we see all the stuff about how, um, you know, the the courts rule against women in terms of rape and all sorts of things. And it's like, oh, the women are oppressed, and say, no, the girls are oppressed because they because they considered more like property. But when they get older, they become like men. It's, the older women are not oppressed. In those <laughs> but we don't have this idea of transformation. we in fact we're kind of stuck and that's part of our pro problem in the West of neoteny in this ex hugely extended um, uh, youth and uh, infantilization that lasts into the 30s. And so you see the electorate is infantilized or the people are, you know, they're not so much sheep as children. And, and so the, you know, that, that's uh, one of the problems that, that we, we face in the West is we've lost the idea that you can transform yourself and should. It's kind of how the individual is sacrosanct. And the individual you are is, yeah, it, you can change it, but it's superficial. It's, you know, fundamentally the core person is, is uh, some kind of idol that we, we have. And your assumption is that if you change it, it's done by consumer choice or something peripheral. But the idea that you can have a deep transformation is 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 uh, is not there even with like trans and transsexuality is is it's a superficial transformation you see they they're even banning say anything to do with say uh reversion therapy or whatever you call it but you see you you see how we've got to in the west is saying you you're allowed to you know do genital mutilation surgery and then it's completely superficial it doesn't change your sex. It doesn't turn a man into a woman. It just mutilates the man's genitals. So, but we, you see, but then uh, at the same time, we ban in law any idea that you can actually internally transform. So it's kind of, you know, ritualized this, this stasis. In other words, what I'm saying is uh, transsexuality is not uh, about change. It's about staying the same. It's about staying st stuck. It's about not developing. It's about not changing. It's about not transforming. And because it's the alien cortex projecting itself from the internal transformation. And a lot of it is saying, you know, I'm the, the whole world is screwed up and I'm screwed up. Um, and it's because, you know, I have the wrong gender. Yes, as you know, reptilian brain. I'm backing the wrong reptilian brain or mammalian brain bias. And to correct it, therefore, I alter my body. But it's the idea of actually getting the alien cortex and transforming that is completely taboo, even now to the point where it's being, you know, made illegal. Um, so it's, it's uh, what we need is transformation. And, 
and we can't get there because of the alien cortex is is stuck and the mammalian brain is stuck. Thank you very much for talking about that metamorphosis because it has actually a biological uh, basis because after the menopause, uh, the women's estrogens change to another one, estriol, that transforms peripherally, peripherally a lot into androgens, uh, not necessarily testosterone, but some family, uh, the same family of steroids. Uh, and hence it has an effect on the voice and sometimes on the hair in the women. I also see in men um, a change also in the metabolism of the, of the steroids in the adrenals uh, at, uh, at a more advanced stage, uh, 60s, 70s. So, and it has, as you, as you remarked, an effect on the body where you notice some breath sometimes and certain changes in the skin and, and the voice too. Um, so yes, thank you very much for highlighting that. And, and also to, to say what, what I was quite horrified with, um, when I started to uh, treat women at that stage of metamorphosis who were having problems with transitioning from um, ovulating to not ovulating, which meant that they were going through the menopause, but uh, the pressure of the pharmaceutical was started to become enormous um, in the 90s and early 2000s to put all these women on hormone therapy, substitutive hormone therapy or hormone replacement therapy. And it became nearly a, a consumer wish that you came to the doctor to have this because that's what you did. And there was no space for discussing this metamorphosis and to, to, uh, it was, it was eerie. I, I was in the front line for that. And I, I must say I was extremely uncomfortable in, in meetings with other doctors and, and listening to the pharmaceutical uh, promoting this, uh, even though I'm not saying that it was completely um, um, un not useful. It did help sometimes for certain people and in certain cases after surgery or people who had really important, but it became a sort of universal thing for many, many, many years. And I think that hampered a lot of this development and metamorphosis that you talk about. And thank you for bringing that up. That's very interesting. Yeah, I think, in, you see, uh, we've lost the ritual. Well, part of the problem <coughs> is that we've lost the rituals of transformation that we had in tribalism. So part of the enlightenment uh, swept all of those kind of things out the, out the door as superstition and religion and not scientifically based. And uh, we lost the idea of, of initiation. So for women, there's a natural initiation. So, but, you know, just reaching puberty is a huge transformation for a woman. They don't need transformation rituals because they have one bodily. But men need a transformation ritual into adulthood. And so that's what the tribal initiations were. That they often involved some kind of genital mutilation and, and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's about um, leaving childhood behind and becoming a male and becoming an adult. Now, that doesn't happen anymore. And you can see the, the results of it is there are a lot of substitutions for it. So, but that, I think that's why there's such a big uh, transgender movement. Is it's a substitute? It's a late substitute for an uh, abandoned initiation into adulthood, and then of course it becomes twisted into you know womanhood and all these. I'm going to say it perversions. Right? So the the it's because uh, a we've delayed the. Uh, childhood development and so they have this arrested development um, and it it suits the system because uh, you know if people are obedient childlike um, they're more domesticated it's it's a process of domestication that dogs went through domesticated dogs went through dramatically cats not so much cattle definitely dramatically went through that transformation under domestication and it it's degenerative. So domesticated cattle, or even you breed them all you like, they're going to pieces. And humans too. Domestication shrinks brains, it makes, makes people unhealthy, it makes all these health problems. And so 
you know, the, the, the fact that we're doing this um, domestication program under the mammalian brain. The mammalian brain says domestication is wonderful and it's gone way too far. Now you're kind of not allowed to be masculine at all because that's, uh, you know, like a, a bull in the child <laughs> or basically a reptilian brain in the nest. And so the, uh, so the result of that is uh, nobody's allowed to, uh, to transform, particularly men. And so you get all these substitutes for transformation because it's deep down and necessary. Our body's you know, psyche knows that you know, it's, it's required. So, you know, I mean, people don't even have bar mitzvahs anymore. <laughs> so, but, the, um, yeah, you, you see all these adult children running around that are kind of domesticated castrates. Um, and, you know, our society is becoming so domesticated and dominated by the, the mammalian brain that it's considered a good thing. And it's always trumped in, you know, carey, sherry, agreeable, mammalian brain stuff, non-violence. And it's like, no, we need violence. We need violence. And uh, anyway, what it hands it hands over the social structure to the to the freaks. So psychopaths and stuff have no problem with violence. And so what happens? They rule us because we all domesticated ourselves. So yeah, it's uh, you know we're coming to the end game of of this mode of society. And well, so yeah, it's, absolutely. No time, time left to do something. Yeah. There's a there's a study that came out uh, recently, um, and it proved that the younger generation is having rough. I'm I'm not too sure of the figures because I don't have them in front of my eyes, but they're enormous. Twenty five percent, nearly less sex than their parents' generation. And the parents' generation was already having less sex than the grandparents' generation nowadays. And I can't remember, the figures were nearly all so 25. So that would mean that the young people now are having sex about half or less time than their grandparents used to. So that's another indicator of, of the death cult. Um, Absolutely, I think. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, one of the things, uh, the notable traits of domesticated animals is they get less fertile. So the, the, the women can get more fertile because they have so many estrogen mimics. So they have all these like things like the phthalates and so on. I mean, talking about woo-woo, about digital and stuff, you can say the same about... Uh, about um, civilization and domestication is that it's more than just, oh, the city and a uh, phenomena, sociological phenomena. It, it goes down to the atom. So it goes down to, you know, a, a kind of a deep principle in the universe. So it's no surprise that, you know, we see a, a completely unrelated fact, like phthalates leads to, to all these hormone mimics, and they reduce male fertility. And so we think that's just a thing on the side and it can be fixed. And you say, no, that's part and parcel of civilization. Civilization is a metaphysical thing. It's so, so you, so what I'm saying is, I'm proposing this very woo woo thing that the, these, these estrogen mimics and stuff, you will find those chemicals in that environment because they cluster together in this whole metaphysical thing called feminization or Carly's rampage. So it's saying, saying you know, if, if you get rid of the phthalates, correct them, uh, you know, fix the problem, you'll find it in some other way. There's some other way the system will work to reduce male Woo woo, it's much bigger than just, you know, coincidence, if you see what I mean. Oh, sorry, D did you want to say something? No, I have actually no questions there. I'm listening to what you're saying with great interest. Thank you. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, in terms of, um, uh, if if you if you didn't find uh, a reduction in in maleness, it's 
I mean, what I'm proposing is a very yin and yang thing. I'm saying you will, what you're looking at with those, those chemical mimics and stuff, you're finding more yin. Now you'll find more yin. I think I got that right. It's yin or yang is the male or female. Uh, anyway, I think I got it right. But anyway, you'll find more of the feminine side as you go into this domesticated thing. So if you, even if you cleaned up the environment, got the phthalates out, um, male uh, fertility wouldn't come back. It would come back through something else, like stress or cause or caused by the system, because you have to, you know, you need health care, and health care gets more expensive the more that we find therapies for things. And so then that, that stress and cortisol will reduce male fertility, and you'll get there by some other route. So, yeah, it's... It goes deeper than just cause and effect. It's it's a whole it's a whole ethos, I and mean, you think of it almost metaphysically as a universal principle. So, so you're dealing with a vast universal principle that you 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 could predict that you would find phthalates and you know estrogen in the water and and stuff. Uh, you could predict that. Um, um, Scientists wouldn't wouldn't go for it <laughs> because they they don't do metaphysics like that. But you're saying no, it's it's there is um, this you know left right uh, principle in the universe, and and we part of the thing is we we become blind to it because we we're, we're so you know again kind of in the gender war. But other other people didn't, you know, other societies never had any problem with this idea. You see, what I'm saying now it might make a lot of people's hair stand on fire. A lot of people, scientists would go, oh, this is horseshit, and just, like, stop watching the video. But it's uh, other cultures would have thought what I'm saying is, is completely obvious. So, for example, if you take the Romans, the Romans had this idea that there were these two opposing, almost opposing forces of masculinity and femininity and they determined you know the outcome of global events and things and they would do divination you see what we don't realize now is that in the circus uh the roman circus a lot of it especially in the early days before it became television um, it was divination they were tr they were trying to see is which forces were in ascendance yin or yang so they would pit um in, in the, the gladiators were a contest and it was kind of like soothsaying and um, you know getting looking at goose entrails in a way uh, you look at human entrails that are spooled out in the arena um, but the the gladiators came in two types it was the, the uh, one was the the sequitur uh, secretor and um, the, the the others the uh, oh, I just forgot what it is. Um, uh, anyway, it's 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 the obvious masculine one. I can't believe I just I can't believe I just forgotten what this is. Uh, it's the I think it's a gladius and secretor, but I can't. Anyway, I'll call it the gladius. But anyway, it's that big the, guy. The, um, I know what you mean. I'm trying to yeah. remember. He's he's it's basically all Freudian psychology. He's got. He's got a, a helmet. He looks like a big dildo. He's got a big phallic sword. He's got a big round shield, which, you know, looks just, you know, like testicles. And he's like obvious metaphor for a man, almost a joke. It's so, such a metaphor for a man. And then the retiaris, and, and uh, they considered that right-handed, right? Right-handed associated, associated with masculinity. And then they would go up against the retiaris. And the retiaris is is um i think it's the secretor and retiaris uh yeah the retiaris yeah that's right he's the secretor then the retiaris was um considered feminine and was considered wily and left-handed and trick tri trickery and so the retiaris would carry a net just like you know eris and all the you know carly was kind of considered to be a tricky witch character you know so it was the if the if the retiaris won it would mean the feminine principle was in ascendance. It would mean, you know, oh, it's very dangerous for males to go out and do battle or anything because they're going to be tricked. It means things were sinister. Left, left men is sinister, you know, sin and dex. So, the, so they would say, you know, these are dark times with, you know, Macbeth and the witches and, you know, 
trickery and false prophecy and you know nets and webs and <laughs> all that kind of thing and uh it's the parallels of it with you know in our society where you, you have the web the world wide web and it's like the retiaris's web and it tricks people and fools people and mimics and then you have deep fakes and say like yeah well Romans wouldn't have trouble seeing what's going on. They say, well, this is the feminine aspect is an ascendance. That's what you're going to get. So, you know, but now we're like, oh, that's superstitious nonsense. And like, well, is it? <laughs> it's, you can see it over and over again. So, uh, yeah, um, we, we would do well to stop thinking of the, <coughs> the ancients as a little bit stupid and not as knowledgeable as us. We, we are domesticates and we should you know hold on to the fact that domesticates are getting stupider <coughs> they're getting stupider in all sorts of ways <coughs> so yeah it's uh but you notice how things normally would restore the balance is you see the balance is restored Kali's rampage is brought to an end <coughs> naturally in this kind of an um so it's it's almost like Lovelock's um, Gaia principle that it is self-stabilizing. <laughs> but here's the, the thing, is I think that this is, it used to be self-stabilizing. <laughs> but our society and the, the globe now has pushed, pushed the system over the edge. We've passed tipping points that we can't recover from. So this might be the end for us. It's not, it's not the normal run of the mill thing. We can't restore the balance. The balance is gone and it's gone. It's gone for good. So even even this, what we're talking about, this subject now, is just for historical reference and for understanding. It's you know, it's kind of the apocalypse is is called the the removing of the veil. You know, it's uh, it's when when all the truth gets told and at the restaurant and the revolu uh, restaurant at the end of the universe, you you get the big reveal where the whole plot is revealed to. You. <clears throat> so this conversation is pretty much revealing the plot. Now, most people would say, well, this is a formula for what to do. They say, no, no, it's, it's a retrospective on what we could have done if we were wiser. But when we haven't been wise enough, so now you're getting this, uh, you know, you're getting the plot revealed to you in this Oedipal way where it's too late for you to do anything about it. So it's pointless to rush out and say, oh, yeah, you just gave us the formula for, you know, change in the world and now get a tribal society and start initiation saying no it's too late for it <laughs> it's too late it's all historical it's, it's nice to know at the end time but it's part of but there is still room for personal metamorphosis and that death of the ego and so largely what i'm telling people here on this video is, is to to destroy their ego and there's a feminine ego and there's a masculine ego and then um, you know, basically undermine both belief in both hopefully by by this this conversation <laughs> and and also there is there is there is maybe time to um think about the people who have not been uh, down this road but are already affected like the the Bushmen, the Pirahas, the, the few people in Papua New Guinea and other ones in very north areas where, I mean, they they are not yet into this historical review we've done, but at the same time, they're affected by it and they might go extinct too. And, um, you know, they where are they now? Where are they now? Every Everything I read, everything I look up, is is going towards domestication and endangering of their of their lifestyle so um what do you think yeah they're, they're a case book of why we're trapped because the the last thing i heard was since everett was banned from going uh into those regions they now they have schooling they have electricity they have you know technological they they you know didn't they they used to eschew the alien cortex they, they would they couldn't teach them to count not because they were stupid because they would resist it they they smelt a rat and they said yeah this is <laughs> we don't do this shit so all this uh kind of alien cortex development 
is now they're doing it. They're getting schools, they're getting brick houses, they're getting generators, electricity, um, medical, uh, healthcare, and stuff like that. So, so we're dragging the last potential survivors into our net just at the point when it goes down. And the, the same is true with the sun people and stuff. You, I posted that video where there's guys going overseas, uh, you know, Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation giving a, a thing so that he's not going to learn from his father the traditional ways. He's, he's going overseas to become an engineer. It's like, no, we don't need engineers. We need engineers to be shot through the head. We need sun people, so we've got some alternatives. We've got some, you know, some, some potential survivors. But again, you see this uh, thing also with domestication is homogenization, so that everybody's the same. It's much easier to keep animals if they're all the same. If they're unpredictable, they, they're harder to keep. So, so you want a uniform product. And that's what, uh, that's what we're getting. And so we're taking the last vestiges of diversity in humanity and turning them into a uniform product. And that, that means we'll all go down together with this kind of potato blight. Because we have a monoculture. Monoculture means we put all our eggs in one basket and that basket is about to fold. So, uh, so the point of all of this is, is not to depress people, the point is, is catharsis. So part of this is, is letting go. What we need to do now is stop all this nonsense talk about hope and people feeling good uh, about the future. And, you know, we need to uh, rail all those in and start with catharsis. And because we want to get to an enlightenment before the end times. If we're all going extinct, the only thing that makes this worthwhile is we have a mass enlightenment at the end of it. It's a pyrrhic victory, but yeah, what the hell? It's better than going down screaming in confusion and ignorance. Thank you. I think this is a, a good way of, of ending. I don't have any other questions. Um, and if you have something else that you want to add, Hugh, otherwise um, we can say goodbye yeah yeah no that's great um yeah just say it to anybody that listens to this that that's uh you know we ain't dead yet if you look outside the window there's a world and uh you can enjoy it as it goes down the problem is clinging to it so if, as soon as you let go and you see the alien cortex and see what it's doing you spot the bull you can like Transcend the ball. <laughs> so you, you, but though no one's going to escape the consequences of this, and no one's going to watch it on TV, you you can objectify it, which is the right way: is to be immersed in it, involved in it, you know, but not be uh, overwhelmed by it. So you you can look at it as a neutral observer from like a bird's eye view, Eat while you're busy being mauled by a tiger. <laughs> you can have this out-of-body experience and see yourself uh, in, a, in a new way. So, oh, well, that's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much, and happy detachment to everyone <laughs> who's listening. <laughs> I will stop recording now. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>